Welcome everybody. My name is Tarmo Ramel and I'm here to show you how to create a fantastic looking histogram in Microsoft Excel. While there are built-in tools for doing these, they're not always quite so intuitive, not quite as flexible, and they don't always produce the product that you might be looking for. So what I'd like to do is turn your attention to this Excel table that I have here. It's a worksheet that has some fabricated data in it. I've got them listed here in no particular order. And if we were to scroll down along this page, you see that we have a series of values that we would like to summarize into a histogram. That is assign a series of bins or groupings and then calculate the frequency or the number of times that values appear in each bin and then produce a graph where we have the heights of columns indicating the relative frequency of observations within each bin. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is identify the bins that is the container or the containers that are going to control the range of input values over which we're going to calculate frequency. So I'm going to create here a new heading and I'm just going to call it bins and next to that I am going to calculate the frequency. Now that is how many times do values fall into each of these bins. I'm going to make these columns a little bit wider. I'm going to write justify or write align that data just so that things line up very nicely. And I'm going to add one more column here that's going to become important uh, in, in just a bit as we get a little bit farther along. And I'm going to call this label. And the label is simply going to allow us to modify the way that our histogram looks at the end, make it look really good. Well, let's highlight those, click on bold, let's add a uh, bottom border here just to keep things nice and clean. What we start off with is an identification of what the upper limits of each bin are going to be. And these can be whatever you decide as long as all of the bins are covering the entire range of data and we don't have any weird gaps in that data set. So let's start off and say, well, the first bin is going to be everything up into and including the value three. The second bin is going to be everything that is larger than fitting into bin number one, but fits nicely into bin number two where the top value is six. And we're gonna continue along in this fashion and create these bins as such. That's really great. We could now scroll through the data and count manually how many times values fall into the first bin, the second bin, the third bin, and so on. That's time consuming, it's tedious, it's prone to errors. And it's also one of those things that if your data set was much larger than what we have here today, it would be virtually impossible to do with any level of success. So let's find an easy way to do this. And the easy way to do that is to use a function in Excel called frequency. Now, this is important. We need to highlight all of the cells where we want the frequency output to be written. And then we start, as we always do with Excel functions, is we type in the equal sign. We type in the name of the function, frequency. And when we open the bracket to start allowing us to identify the arguments that control how this function works, we're going to see that it needs first a data array and then secondly, a bins array. And the key word here is array. It's going to modify slightly how we implement this in just a moment. But let's start off here. It's looking for a data array. We're simply going to use our mouse and our left mouse button. And we're going to hold down the left mouse button as we drag and highlight all of the values in our data array. I'm just gonna scroll back up so we can see where we are. And then I'm going to put in a comma and I'm going to highlight the bins that are going to define the bins for calculating the individual frequencies. And then close 
the bracket. Notice that I haven't hit enter the way that I normally would. Because these are arrays, we need to hold down the shift and the control key at the same time as we hit enter. And when we do so, all of the frequency calculations will have been made for us nicely in the frequency column. That's really great news. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to type in some things here into the label field that are going to make the formatting of our histogram uh, a little bit nicer in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting in a single quotation mark, which means that everything in the cell is going to be treated as being text and it forces the cell to not try to perform math or tell us that there's an error in the calculation because when I type in one to three, I want it to know that this is a range of values and as a label defining the bin rather than a mathematical operation which would require an equal sign in front of it. So that is the first bin. The second bin will be uh, from four to six, and the next bin after that will be from seven to nine, and the bin after that is going to be nine to, oh, sorry, 10 to 12, and 13 to 15. Now, notice that if you had continuous data and you had um, partial values, then we would want to make sure that we use appropriate inequality symbols less than, equal to, or greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to, uh, to make those ranges continuous and make sure that we don't double count or drop out any values from this range. However, because these values are all integers, it's very clear which bin those will then fall into. All right, so the next thing that we do is we highlight the data that we would like to use to create our histogram. And there are different ways we can do this. I'm just going to highlight some of this data. I'm going to head up to insert. I'm going to head over here to inserting a column graph. And there we have our first attempt at a graph, which isn't all that great. We can see that the blue bars represent the individual bin values, but we're not trying to map the bins. The bins are there to organize our frequency counts. So we can left click on any of these blue bars and notice that the handles appear on all of the blue data sets uh, or the data values. We can simply hit delete on our keyboard and it will get rid of that data series for us. And one of the first things we want to do is remove the gaps between the bars to make this a proper histogram. So we can right click on one of these data columns, head over to format data series, and notice that there's the gap width identifier and slider over here. We could type in 0% or we could simply take this and scroll it all the way over to zero, which removes all of the gaps in our histogram. We now have also the opportunity to change how the histogram appears to us. We might not like orange bars outlined in blue, so we could always click on the fill and line paint bucket tool over here, head over and expand the fill options. We can choose a solid fill and choose some color combination that we like, perhaps light green bars and we can go for borders and change that to be black and we can play around with the thickness of the outlines that's maybe a little bit too primary school but maybe something that looks like uh, one point is quite sufficient this is now starting to look a lot like a histogram however we don't have axis labels yet we have this uh, legend entry that doesn't really help because as a histogram uh, that's not necessary and we have these bin labels across the bottom one through five that don't really help us understand what the range of input values were so we're going to go and change and fix these things to create a histogram that really makes sense and we can always modify 
the heading so that it also makes a lot of sense. So let's start off by removing this legend entry here. All we need to do is left click on it in some location, uh, select just this uh, entry here and hit delete and it will get rid of it. And notice that it resizes our histogram, but we still need to put axes labels on it. So let's, uh, let's head up here to chart design on our ribbons. Over on the far left, we have add chart element. If we click on there, we can head down to axis titles and we can add a primary horizontal axis label. And we click on there again under axis titles and add a primary vertical label. The vertical label, if we double click on there to select and we delete what's written there, we can put in here frequency so that we know that this is what it is that that axis is measuring and across the bottom we're going to have bins or bin. It tells us that this is bin number one, bin number two and so on but we need to change these labels so that they make a little bit more sense as well. I'm just going to close that off. I'm going to move this off to the side so that it's not overlapping the data that we have and now we're going to work at changing these bin labels. So again let's select our chart. Let's head on over to chart design and find the button for select data. When we click on there we can see that the horizontal category axis labels are currently one two three four five which is what we see on our histogram. But we don't want them to be one, two, three, four, five. We want them to be these labels here that are in column F. So we can click on the edit button and we can simply select this range of input access labels. And when we're happy with that, we can click OK. Notice that it's copied those nicely into this representation and we click OK once more and there we have a histogram where the vertical axis is labeled as frequency. The bins are labeled based on a design or a structure that we have wanted and the labels are properly placed on both axes. The great thing about this structure is that if we went in and we changed our data set, imagine that this value of 15 should actually be a 3, and we change that, notice that the histogram updated automatically because the data is linked to the frequency calculation based on our definition of bins, and the data in this graph or in this plot, or as Excel calls it, a chart, is linked to the original data. So there you have it, building a histogram, having full control over every element that you display. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you know, click on the like button, uh, listen for more updates, and hopefully I'll be bringing you more little tips and tricks from Excel, remote sensing, GIS, and spatial analysis as time goes on.